me get right into it. You know, uh, your know, goal today is to really have you be inspired, you know, look about changing perspectives and, and, and think about your method, about how you go about, uh, you know, and when we talk about the groove, I'm not mean just about music because it's definitely music. It's kind of like a covers everything. And, and listening to Maxim's talk today and hopefully I get to see some of the other folks here, there's some uh, ethereal things that go into this having to do with vibrations and frequencies. We, everything is a frequency. Everything is a light frequency. And, uh, oh, I got a screen of everybody here. And I got my good friend, Brian's here. So um, I can't see everybody. So I can't ask how many musicians are here because uh, that's a whole different thing. Don't want to get into uh, uh, things that you already know. But basically, uh, light is a frequency. Sound is a frequency. The fact that this table, everything is solid is, is, is a frequency together. And so how do you approach that? when you're creating is you have to be also vibrating in an energy that uh, lends itself to that. So, you know, uh, it affects, frequencies affect the human body, the sound. Uh, that's why we feel good or, uh, or we feel bad. You know, for example, um, you know, 50 to 500 hertz is, this, is the frequency sound of waves, which is very calming. Uh, 3000 hertz is about, you know, the frequency of a fire alarm, which is very, puts you on the edge and creates this um, very uh, flight response. Um, so how you approach those frequencies and how you know where they are in the spectrum um, and the things that you do really affect the outcome of what you're working on. Um, it, you know, and what is a, a hertz? What is the frequency? And it's, uh, I've been finding really hard talking to, to names here. So if you guys had put your cameras, it'd be great to see people's faces, but we'll talk to the names. Um, so basically, you know, one hertz is one cycle. So think of that as long vibration. Thank you for turning the cameras on. It's great to see people. This has been, you know, I usually talk in a room full of people and I walk around the room and, and talking to names, you guys look beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for turning your cameras in. And um, so uh, the frequencies and the sounds affect our bodies. And, and you can't go into creative mode, say, in, I'm going to use a song analogy, but you can use this in everything that you do. I'm just using the, the, the musical as, as, a, as a medium to be able to communicate through. Um, but there's an alchemy on it. So the trick in and finding the groove is how do you align your frequencies to that frequency that's already there? The groove is already out there. You know, it's sort of like, uh, you know, it's, it's the flow, the ebb, the secret, you guys seen all that. You know, that is already out there in creation. Um, and it's vibrating, and it's vibrating at a very specific frequency. We're vibrating at an, our very own specific frequencies. Each one of you guys is vibrating at a different frequency. So the key is to put yourself in a state or do everything around you in a place where you're aligning your vibrations up to that creative groove that's happening. And once you do that, you've all experienced it in one way or another, uh, sometimes by accident, but you can do it purposely if you do certain things, which we'll talk about here. But that's really the key. The key is aligning your frequency. It is as simple as it is, but then it's how you do it, right? your frequency to that ebb and flow that's already out there. It, the, it's, the groove is already out there. You don't have to create, you just tap into it. And when you tap into it, it's like mainlining into electricity. You just go, oh, oh, there it is. That's it. Okay, so let's take it. If you're working by yourself, then you just have you yourself to deal with and it's just your frequency. Okay, you're working with a partner or a group or and I'm talking, it could be a rock group, it could be a, an accounting team, it could be a creative team, it could be a marketing team. You're now working with other vibrations. And managing and realizing that and being aware, aware of those vibrations, then you can start aligning that. Now, sometimes things just go like this, right? Have you guys ever met somebody or been in a group and you just go, pump, I just met this person I feel I've seen forever. Well, people go, oh, that's, you know, past lives. It's no, it's vibrations. Your vibrations just went in. You're in the same vibration, right? Then, conversely, you run into other people and you're working and it just happens to everybody. You're walking to the studio and it's like, oh, that's going to be nightmarish. You know, why is that? 
Well, that those frequencies are, are, are you know, we've got the fire alarm frequency against the, the nice waves of the frequencies, right? So that's what that is. And so the key that's happening into the groove is to take all the elements, analyze it, and then Okay, who if it's myself, it's just me. I can just work on myself. I, I so I, I have my own methods. I know how to get myself into it. And you know, wake up every morning and go, God, great, I'm alive. It's so wonderful. I get to do this today. I, you know, and it's not every day because we all go through, you know, last night was the darkest night of my life. But I woke up today and it's sunny. So the sun vibration is different than the night vibration. So there's a lot of things that um, I'm gonna skip over sinfully because we could talk hours and hours about the deepnesses of that. But in essence, you need to line up your frequency into whatever other things that you're doing. Okay, let's take a song. So if it's a song, we have a beat. Well, that has to line up right with the bass and everything. So when you hear a song and you just go, oh, I love that, this is so fantastic. And everybody loves it, a million people love it. it. It's not by accident. That frequency is vibrating and it's clicking with everybody. And everybody goes, wow, that's just, that is so cool. I can't stop doing this, right? Then other things, you just go, oh, I hate that song. And there's a small group of people that like it, but it's not like millions and millions and millions of people. That just hit a, a tone where all of the creators of that music, of that, they were all in alignment. Their frequencies, their, all their vibrations were just going like this. And that's why you have groups like the Rolling Stones out there. They go through all these things, but they've been together, ZZ Tops, they've been together like 50 years. So talk about lining up frequencies. The difficult part is how do you find that? How do you get it? You know, if you're working by yourself, it's it's okay. But I like to work in a group. And working in a group, you're always going to manage that thing. So um, one of the things that starts always is did I get that right? Can you guys see me? Okay, old school. So you have inspiration, right? Okay, so uninspired. Well, you can be inspired by anything. Even being pissed off can inspire you because you can write a crazy stuff or, be, or write that very good email. But you have to have mindfulness of that. You have to be conscious and aware of it. And, um, you know, there's, uh, you, you just have to be mindful of that. And inspiration can be everywhere. And so how do I get inspired? Well, if you're in a spot, like I'm sitting here and I'm not being inspired and I'm trying to play my, and it's not coming up, change your perspective. Change your perspective. I just saw a gentleman here. I'm going to see the name over here. Moved outside. He changed the perspective. It looks great. I have now a great shot of you being outside there. Uh, so if you're stuck and not being into inspiration, change your perspective. You know, and that could be as easy as making a cup of coffee or tea or walking outside. What I do is I walk down to the store and go get a beer. So my, my hard part is I have to walk to the store, and, but I get a beer when I come back. So that changes my perspective. When I come back, I've got a little exercise to get oxygen, and it changes everything in inspiration. Another thing to get into sort of how do you find the crew once you're inspired in it, okay, you have to have this. Okay, and what does that mean? Confidence and knowledge. You have to be confident that what you're doing and what you know, that you're, you're, you're good at doing that. You have to put the time in, is that, you, you have to be confident. You can't just go in there and go, well, I kind of know the part. That's not, you're not gonna find a groove, you're not even be close to it. Or I kind of think I think what I wanna write here, or maybe I should write or blue on this paint, or whatever you're creating, if you're, the one, two, threes of it, the craft of it that actually moved it. In this in the talk today, Maxim said a perfect thing. You know, inspiration is not the 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 tools aren't it. That just lets you show it to everybody else, right? So you need to have knowledge, confidence in your knowledge of that. You know, I know when I pick up the guitar, I don't even think my fingers are going. I'm at a different level because I already have the, the knowledge of where those things are. So I'm not thinking, should I be on this thing or that? I'm, at, I'm trying to find that vibration of groove. And you can do that in writing. You can do it in accounting. I have a great accountant. He's very creative. So it's not a thing that you have to be in the arts. It's, it's, I, this is across 
everything. If you walk through your life like this, things will just happen to you magically because you're aware and conscious of it. So the groove is really a thing that's happening all the time. And, and they call it a secret, they call it manifesting, you know, in music, we call it the groove. And when musicians tap into the groove and, and the musicians out here in this group here, um, no, you, you just, there is no other high than when you're in the groove and that song is just grooving. There's just nothing like it. And unless you've experienced that music, once you do it, then you want to have it all the time, right? And so then you go, okay, well, what, how did that happen? Well, we vibrated all together perfectly in that and we tapped into that and we grabbed it. No, we grabbed it. We grabbed and wrote it for like 20 minutes. And, and that's how you get fantastic albums. That's how you get amazing pictures. That's how you get amazing books. That's how you get amazing art. That's how you get amazing dances. They, artists, they all tap into that groove and it's a vibration. And so if you put yourself into that, now what comes into that? You have to be careful what you eat, what you drink, all of that. It's different for everybody. You know, look at Keith Richards. I can't believe he's still walking, but he's, you know, very, he's taking every. And then there's other people that are just pristine. They're, they're godly in their, in, their, in their habits. So it's not about that. It's about what works for you. You know, what's going to be the thing that gets you in that groove? And so one of those is inspiration and confidence of knowledge that you know how to do that really well. So you're not thinking about which word should I put in or which number should I, that, you're not, that's automatic. That's already happening. And you're up here, you're like, oh, there, there's a group. I, I can feel it, it's vibrating, ah, I got it. But you're not, the mechanics are there. So if you don't have the mechanics, you're gonna have a, a, a difficult time finding the group and you could do it by accident. Now the mechanics don't have to be a virtuoso. This is where people get it wrong. The mechanics don't have to be a virtuoso. They just need to work for you. They just need to be fine for you. The Ramones were great. They just had four chords in their songs. That's it. There was no amazing stuff. But look at their song because why? They locked into that vibration, right? So it's not about how fast you can do it. it, it as a matter of fact, that can actually kill the groove if you start thinking and putting too much into it. So it's a feel. So there's a lot of elements in it, which leads us into the next one, which is, everybody read that? Awareness of purpose for the people that don't have the cameras and if you had your camera on, you can see the cool thing that I'm doing. No. Um, awareness of purpose. Okay, that's, well, I, I know what you're doing when you, when you, to get the group and you're going into the studio, what are we doing? We're gonna do this one too, that's it. We're not gonna rewrite it. We're not gonna play that. We're not gonna experiment on this. We have a purpose. We're going in to do this, okay? Now that sounds really easy and basic, right? Well, we're gonna do it. But when you have more than one person in a group or in a team, four or five, six, they may not all have the same awareness of purpose because we're all individual and they may think, well, you know, I thought we were just gonna do my part or I thought we were gonna work on this. We said we were gonna, what about the paint over here? Or, you know, we're in a corporate thing. It's like, well, no, 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 no. We're, we're now going way off the rails. And there's no way in this disarray, our vibrations, our frequencies are all over the place. And to get them in the groove, we all need to be vibrating at the same place, right? So in a group setting creatively, there has to be an awareness of the purposes. It's what we're going to do. Um, and then, the last thing that happens is this. You have to be in the proper environment, right? Well, what is that, Al? Well, some of us are very susceptible to some things. We're very, all very, you know, for example, there's certain smells and sounds I can't take. You know, I have a friend of mine who just goes crazy because of certain frequency. And there's frequencies that, again, back to the frequency relations that are both good and bad, you know? so. Having a knowledge of that and being aware of your environment is, okay, well, why do uh, stars have this and that and they wanna have chocolate this without the green M&Ms and, you know, Diana Ross wants to have the whole carpet done on the thing and, and the dressing rooms. And you know, I mean, literally at the forum I was there, they changed the entire dressing rooms of the, of the basketball team into a suite when Diana Ross played it. Because why? To change the environment. It was a locker room, right? She's got to go out and perform. I was blown away when I walked into the locker room because in that morning, it was a locker room. It was a hockey locker room. In the afternoon, it looked like a lounge 
in a five-star hotel. They're, I didn't even know. They were just like, wow, this wasn't, what, it's amazing. So what would that do? Why would they go to that great expense to create that environment? Well, it gives the artist a really good and feeling and puts that vibration. All those things, the environment is another vibration of color, of objects, of beauty for that person. And we're all different. You know, our beauty and our we can be completely different, which is great. But the thing is to know what works for you, for that, for you, the artist, to do it. What is your environment? Put yourself in that. If you're not comfortable, don't do it. Even down to the clothes, you know, why? What does that guy wear the same shirt every time we go record? Because he feels great in it. And when he does it, it creates a great vibration for him. And whatever that is. So these are small little things that we never notice. But I started taking account, well, how did that go good? Oh, well, and so there's certain things that I do all the time. If I'm going to the studio, I got a certain set of gear, a certain thing, threads that I wear. If I go to this thing, I, it, whatever makes you feel, down to the shoes. I mean, this sounds a little bit crazy to some. You go, well, no, I'm, um. But then the other side is that, well, that's fine because you feel fine in that. As long as you know what that is for you and you're aware of it. Now, if you're not aware of it and you don't care, one day you go like, oh, you don't know why, you don't know why you're not finding the group because you didn't do all the elements to try to get yourself into that space of finding the group. So, which again, are all the vibrations. So when you line up all those vibrations, you start, there's a copacetic harmonic thing that happens and you generate this energy that's phenomenal, phenomenal. I don't know if you guys saw the young girl who did the, the, the poet at the inauguration, the, the uh, youngest girl did the poet. She was amazing. That was an amazing, amazing thing. I'm not a poet, and I was like crying. Why? She hit the vibration perfectly. She was on it. She was in the groove. And you, you all notice things when a whole lot of people, that, that thing is in the groove. And that's what I mean. It's very esoteric. What is it? It's frequency, it's, it's this, but it's vibrations. And it's putting every element that you have a control of into that, into that space. Now, some things you don't have control of, but you can change. I walked into recording studios and, and it was, I didn't book it. We were in, we come in and then the place smelled and it was horrible. And I go, well, let's give it a chance. And then after about an hour, you go, this isn't working. There's no way we're going to get anything good here. It's just not working. You know, and so just stop, you know, it's kind of like cut your losses kind of thing or try to change the perspectives. So then we say, what can we do? All right. Well, let's tell you what, let's uh, let's bring some candles in. OK, let's go get some more beer or something. OK, let's put some drapes up, you know, send one of the roadies out to get carpets. We, so we changed. We had we were able to do that because we couldn't. But we knew it wasn't going to happen. So we took a time out to just be stressed from like this isn't working and everybody starts getting you know, the vibrations go the wrong way. We'll diffuse that by changing the perspective. Say, what can we do? What, what do we have right now that we can do? We can do this. We can change the look. Let's change it. And we change it. We decorate it. And in that, we got fun. We put a Christmas light. And then after all that work, it took us half a day to get it going. And a lot of work. And people would say, you guys are crazy. You came in to record. You were decorating the studio. It's like, well, no, it doesn't feel good, man. It's like, and we, we can't. So let's just do it. So... The environment is sound and light and it has a profound effect on it. And so be mindful, change the perspectives and do whatever you need to do to, to, to get to that point and then let go, be open to inspiration, just be open to it. Um, the second part, confidence and knowledge and practice your craft. You know, you, you can't think about the mechanics. You can't think, are these the right words that I'm writing and correct, grammatically correct? No, it should be at another level of inspiration, another level of vibration. You should try to vibrate up here. So to vibrate up here, you kind of have to put in the 10,000 hours of what you do. And if you've heard of 10,000 hours of whatever it is. For, for, for musicians, it's like 20,000 hours of each day to be at any level because there's some amazing, amazing people. But um, again, it's really the vibration and the frequencies that you move in and your awareness of um, your place in that and the other folks with you. Now, if you start looking at that, you'll start seeing it and it'll start applying it, you know, right away, you know, you meet somebody, you, you, you instantly have an, a, a connection with them. You're vibrating in, a, in the same general area. 
Other people, you're not going to work really good. You're, the vibrations are just going to not happen. And that's not bad or good. Or it's just the way it is. And so you can then, knowing that, adjust or not. So um, it's a very sort of esoteric thing what is the groove and it applies to everything, but I like to relate to the secret and all the things that people have said at manifesting because it's a vibration. And if you can vibrate at the higher frequency and tap into it, put yourself in that same copacetic, then it's huge. It's, it's an amplitude that's an algorithm out, out the window of how much power that has. Hence, hence the song, hence the movie, hence the, the poem, hence the painting that affects so, so many people. Um, I'd like to just toss out some questions here before um, we run out. So anybody has some questions, um, I, you know, uh, open up the mics and, and uh, be happy to chat because I'm really curious. Uh, this Zoom thing is so hard for me because I'm so interactive and not being able to get feedback from you right away is just, well, it's what it is, but it's fine. So if anybody has some questions uh, or anything about what I said or say, oh, you're out of your mind, um, love to hear. So uh, let's open up the mics. Thank you very has. much. If you'd like to ask a question with an audio, then you can raise your hand. Uh, you can press the button participants and then you'll see the, uh, the button called raise your hand. If you're on the phone, press the three dots and raise hand. Otherwise, just let me know in the chat and I'll unmute you just so that we don't sort of try to ask a question at the same time. And then if you don't want to turn on your audio, but still want to ask a question, just write it in the chat. So over to you guys. Yeah. Okay, Pasha, you can now unmute yourself. Amazing. Thank you so much, Sonia. Um, hi, Alberto. Thanks so much, first of all. Amazing, amazing talk. Really, really interesting. Um, one of the things that I'm, I sort of touch on in my talk in a few days is, is imposter syndrome, which I'm sure you may or may not have had uh, at some point during your career, um, but, I wanted to know how, how do you navigate your way back to that groove and finding confidence in your knowledge when you're going through that period? Because it's, you know, it's a very kind of disjointed time. So how, how would, what advice would you give in terms of getting back to that, um, to that, to that groove? You mean when you're in a bad state? Yeah, it, well, you're finding it, you're kind of losing, you feel like you've lost that groove that you've had that's kept you going, that confidence in your knowledge, all of that, you know, kind of starts to sort of shake. Oh. How do you? But first of all, it's also really difficult to read the book or read my mind. To live in that, then you become sort of a master. But to answer your question, I change my perspective. What I do, I, 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 I look inside and I go, why am I feeling like this? I, it's, and that's really based on fear. That's really based on fear. So I step into my fear and I go, and it's horrible. It's not an easy thing. And it happens to me on, on different things. You know, personally, you know, my, my mom's getting this you know, death and all those things. So why am I feeling this way? So step into it and, and then you, it's gonna be hard, but then just go, what is it? Why am I feeling this way? Oh, I know what it is. It's grief. You know, oh, that's what it is. It's grief. You know, that this happened to me in November. It's grief. And I had, a, at the minute that I said that, it just washed away. The fear just went, Phew. Because I stepped into it and I was shaking, stepping into it because it's, you know, but you got to do it. That's how you got to do it. And then you go, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? And if you ask, it comes to you. And I go, oh, it's grief. And the minute I said that word, it just went, Phew. I go, ah, okay, I'm cool now. And I grab my guitar and I'm just back in it. You know, but it's, so it's just stepping into the fear and finding out what, what is it that's causing this? Because it's, it's not, it's, it's not existent. There's, there, you know, fear. We only need to fear is fear itself, you know? It's a great quote from, I think Roosevelt said that. Uh, so that's what I do. I step into it and, and for me, it only happens on, on big major things, you know? But I'm excited uh, every day about being alive. So I, I, as I step into this, you'll find that those fears become smaller and smaller in yeah. less frequencies. When they come, they're really big. They're, you, the little ones just start going away. But very good question. Thank you. Um, anybody else have anything, uh, any questions here? I, I, I'd like to see by a race of hands, how many musicians are here, from people that I can see, just anybody here. No, oh, there we go, somebody over here. Great, great, oh, that, well, I'm thinking maybe people are struggling yes. to find the button if somebody, yeah, will do. Would you like to, would you like to speak now? 
I'm sorry, who? Was that a raised hand? Oh, well, oh no, we were just, raised. I asked them to raise their hands, but somebody has a question, go ahead, just open up the mics. Hi, yeah, sorry, I couldn't find the mute button, so I just had to use a, a thumbs up. Yeah, that's okay, it's a normal thing. <laughs> but yeah, kind of going off from Pasha's point, um, I guess, how do you, um, it's a bit personal, so sorry if it's a bit um, stepping over the line at all, um, but how do you balance your mental health in sort of an industry where um, it's constantly based on comparison in the musicians you're with in a session um, or kind of tapping in to an emotion to kind of get inspiration from? How do you sort of protect that part of yourself um, when creating music? Well, that's a really good question. Um, well, first of all, I, I again, I, I try to be aware. That's, the, that's, a, that's a word that I cannot say enough. I'm, and, it, it, and what is being aware? I, I try to be, how am I in that situation? And, um, and I try to latch into the vibrations of the other folks that, are, that I'm in that session with or whatever. I don't do sessions, you know, but if I'm working with other people, I'll tell you, where, where is their vibrations at? You know, and if you start figuring out where different frequencies are, then you can sort of put yourself in those things. And in the process of that, you sort of shelter yourself because you're not in a different mode. Your brain is not thinking about sheltering yourself in that. Your brain is, think, your brain is working on um, mixing in with those frequencies because ultimately you need to do that. You need to make that happen, right? And so once you put your brain into that, it stops, you know, it's, it, the protection is automatic. You know, you, then you feel engaged and you're engaged in the, in, in the, in the piece that you're, you're working together with folks. Do you do sessions for... Um, with a lot of folks? Um, yeah, I'm a producer and sound engineer. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm actually more of the person who's trying to maybe bring out the motions in a way or sometimes keep them at bay. Well, so then, see, you're managing all those frequencies. Of all of those people that are there, you have to say, okay, this frequency, that person, I'm calling a person a frequency. They, they're vibrating here. They're vibrating over here. How can I get them to do this, right? Well, the first step in that is noticing how, where, where are they at? Well, he's super hyper and he's kind of chill and I can't get him motivated. And he's all over the place and he wants to change everything, right? And the mix isn't right. And can you turn this up? And I want more symbol on the left side. You know, actually I produce it. Can you put the symbol on the left? It's like, okay. So it's, taking all those uh, different amounts of frequencies and then, be, okay, here's what I got. And then your job is going to be, you know, managing that, you know, and, and, and then, but if you're aware how that vibration is happening, you're already way ahead of the curve because then, then you know how to deal with it. You know where it is, you know, you know where those things are. And then you can stop it or take breaks. Well, a great thing is in the middle stuff, I'll tell people, all right, we're going to take 15 minutes. And they're not even expecting it. What? But everybody likes a break, right? Everybody's working. Like nobody said, no, I was gonna take a break. You know, well, we were in a session one time and we'd say, should we take a break? We were sweating after I was like, no. So that's always, so change it up. You know, that's one thing. It's like, if everybody's expecting this, you know, and it's not going, I'll go, bop, just something completely different. And experiments, you know, it's every situation will be different. You know, but that's a really good question because that's, that happens on studio sets. You know, I've been on sets where there's 50 crazy producers. You know, I've done work for Disney, for Warners. I mean, talk about, you know, crazy producer people coming in and wanting to change everything. I've had, can we change this the last 15 minutes of this cut? 15 minutes of a cut? It's like, it airs tomorrow. You know, we can't change 15 minutes of a cut. No. You know, and so people were like, Al, you, you said, well, yeah, because his boss is going to, come to me and say, you were right. There's no way that it's going to happen. You can't change it. So you have to sort of figure out where that is uh, through experience. But if you latch on how people are vibrating, where their energy is at, then that gives you a way better picture of how to uh, deal with the situation when it starts going wonky. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, Al. Just a reminder, if you can't find the raise hand button, you can always let me know in the chat and I will unmute you. We have another question from Will. Will, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so, so I guess I'd preface what I'm saying. It sounds to me like, you know, this, this talk and your, uh, your message is about what a lot of people call the flow state. 
um, you know, getting in the groove or some people call it, I think, um, you know, being, in the, being in the zone, athlete zone, but sort of being in the moment. Um, I know you talked about awareness of purpose and environment. Uh, Miss, was there a point before that in terms of kind of these these things that you try to cultivate to? Yes, I'll give them to, to you. Generate that frequency. You came in late, so I'll give it to you. Here's one. Awareness of purpose. I'll give them to you in order. Yeah. It's, here, first is inspiration. Okay. Um, then you have confidence in the knowledge, and then awareness of purpose. And then came the environments. So the uh, just uh, to really quick, uh, he's unmuted. Can you unmute Will for a second? Hello, we lose everybody. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm unmuted again. I don't know how I got I got muted temporarily. Uh, so that's what you were asking. You missed those parts, right? And what was your question? I missed about? those first. I missed those first two parts. And I guess. I mean, just so for, for myself personally, I'm a, I'm a visual artist. I paint, um, work, you know, work, paint, draw. Um, and this kind of ties into what Pasha was saying a little bit, but I'm trying to figure out, like, for me, the block is just getting, sitting down and getting started right now. Like, um, you know, just like putting paintbrush to paper like getting once I get in motion then I get in the flow but I'm not sure what it is that's between me and the canvas right now or the okay. page and, and this will is a thing that happens to everybody so you're not you're not alone in this so that's um, okay so um, the the thing that I do to and that happens to everybody the thing that I do is uh, you you need to create a, a system where it's not, uh, you know, right now in your brain, is, you, you, it's a block. And so the block becomes bigger if you think of it as a block, you know, putting thing to it. And so, um, mm -hmm. try, you know, try to do a different, try to have a, a process, of, uh, uh, you know, like for example, what I do is, okay, today I have to write this thing. It's awesome. It's great. I really want to do this. And I just, I go have my coffee. I go sit outside and I think about it. So this is, this is my thing. So the thing that I'm going to do precedes all these other cool things that I set up for. Like I get to have my coffee outside then I'm going to have my muffin. Okay. I've got my whole little routine that I do before I get to that. And then when I get to it, I go, ah, oh, it feels so good because I just set myself in that vibration. What you need to do in an essence to that is set yourself in that vibration. You know, when you wake up in bed, what do you do? You know, first thing I do in bed, I'm like, Oh God, I'm alive. This is great. I'm not dead. It's awesome. You know, <laughs> no, I've had friends that pass out in the middle of the night. I think I made you laugh. I go, this is so good. Thank you. And then I go, I am so grateful that I have a heater and this nice bed and a warm shower because there's people that don't have that. And now that's very basic, mm -hmm. right? But that just little manifestation in bed before I even get out, that little thing already sets my tone because I already got to thank to the universe that, mm, oh yeah. my God is so good so already my vibration coming yeah. out I've, I've already turned it i've already turned the notch on the vibration to start vibrating cool because i said oh man this is so good right I do right really i don't think about it anymore i just kind of go oh this is so good and i go oh i get to have coffee oh yeah <laughs> so but i mean it's different things for you maybe tea i have a friend who's crazy about green tea he's gone to china and gone got like Two thousand dollar bags of green tea. So it's whatever it is for you, you know. Mm -hmm. But you need to do that first thing, and then it sets the tone. And it could be for that day. Like today, it was like great. I get to talk and meet a whole lot of great people. I get to see my friend Maxim. You know what a great joy. Mm -hmm. You know. But I was up at seven. I had eight things meetings before today. I had my regular gig. I got to do, and then I got more stuff today. So other people would say, "Well, that's a crazy long day." But no, it's so good for me. You know, because I love that vibration of energy. You know, so do you right. do, do have a method that gets you in the right vibration? Think of that. Just think of, I need to, what is it? And okay. it could be the clothes that you're wearing. You know, today I'm going to paint, but I'm going to wear this really cool shirt because I like that. Last time I wore this shirt, I got this other really great thing done. I, I'm doing, I'm giving you my thanks, you know, because I'm very, I, I have a lot of. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. That's, that's super helpful.
That I really is helpful. I purposely put things that lead me to get into that vibration. And and I say it's mm -hmm. environment, it's you already the knowledge, knowing the awareness of purpose is like I'm gonna paint uh, you know, a landscape. You know what you're gonna do. So that's your awareness of it. You know, the environment is okay, I'm outside in, in this beautiful studio, you know, and the birds are chirping, you know, but if you're there and there's like three kids running around yelling and screaming or somebody's blaring a radio, well, you, you, you're already not going to hit that vibration because there's other vibrations hitting you. There's other sound vibrations hitting you. Right. So try to put yourself in the spot where the light vibrations and the sound vibrations vibrate with you, with, with your vibration, which are different for everybody here. It's different for everybody. And that's sort of the crux. It's finding that for you. You know, I know what it is for me. I'm trying to share it with everybody that it's putting all these little markers and things like getting up in the morning that gets me that centers me right there and i'll give you another one because everybody i say so something where i'm really pissed off and i'm really depressed or something's happened or i just talked to my mom who's in the care center and then what i'll do well then okay i'll go outside and i'll just sort of just sit there and meditate you know no meditate i'm not i'm not as a thing like max and but I do have my own meditation. I go outside, I have a chair, I've got this great view and I just sit there and I just, just, I just am. And I just let it all go. And so I have my little markers like that. And I'm just inspired. I hope everybody here is inspired to put your little markers in there. What, what is that thing that, that gets you in the right vibration? And it's those things, you know, it's the environment, is that uh, an awareness of purpose, what you're gonna do is the knowledge confidence and knowledge that you know what you're doing because you can't paint if you don't know the colors of the paint so you really have to have that craft so when you go to paint you're not thinking about how am i going to do this you're trying to grab that vibration up here of being super cool right so but you need to know the craft and then lastly it's just the inspiration to start all that so all those things are basically just barely to that and i put markers in my life to get me into that vibration thank you this has been a wonderful answer thank you all for a wonderful question we have Pasha over to you now. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we're really back again. Um, yeah, I, I really, really resonated with that. I think definitely built on what I was asking as well before. Um, just then obviously you talked about, you know, having that routine and, and surrounding yourself and having those things that show you this kind of the simple things, you know, that kind of, you know, make you feel, um, at peace and feel kind of ready to sort of approach that kind of you know process do you think that sometimes not having that awareness of purpose can also lead to you know doing something great you know rather than always kind of going in saying I'm gonna do a landscape canvas I'm gonna compose a you know a jazz 12 bar blues if you kind of just went in and, and whatever happens, happens, do you think that sometimes that can be just as effective as going in with, you know, the... Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> yes. But, but the caveat to that is you need to be vibrating in that mode, okay? Right. So, so, so yes, I have done that in my edits for, for I, 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 I did a lot of shows for TVS and Disney. I had to do this montage with the producer who we vibrated so good that we, we just, we didn't even talk. So we were locked in, okay? So this gets back to our, our vibrations were great. And we had to put the show together. He's sitting in the back of the couch. I got all these things. And so it was uh, basically a lot of songs with imagery as you see on PBS, right? It's a cool thing. And, there's, and it, had a, it had a theme to it. But basically it was like a lot of great pictures of the sound, of great soundtrack that we had done. So. So talk about random, so, I, so we're talking, and so I put down the track, and so as we're talking, I just grabbed like a whole lot of clips at random, totally at random, like da, 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 and I just dropped them into the timeline on top of it, and I just made it so it covered the entire song. And I did that, and I go, hey, let's watch it. And he goes, okay. So he goes, I go, let's try random stuff. And he goes, okay, let's start with this song and go for it. And so as, as he's talking, I just do my random. I hit play on that first tune, and every cut almost went right with the music beat. It, it, like, it was like, so about 20 seconds into it, we were laughing. We were like dying laughing because we were just amazed because we purposely went to chaotic we throw it. But we were both in the, we were both vibrating at the same frequency. We were both in the groove of, of having that much fun. So when well, you could say, well, Al, you did that, but I did it at random. I was vibrating in that. So I feel that the essence of what that is got me into that and said, cut it here, cut it here. Because I didn't, I didn't even do three seconds, three seconds. No, it was like totally at random. 
pa 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 literally took me about 20 seconds. We left it. That's how it aired. It was, it was literally perfect. I had to move two frames one way or another to make the beat hit perfect. But it was hitting on the music changes like if you had planned it. Yeah. And I don't know the music changes that you normally edit on because you don't want to have the cadence be all the time on the same edit. So it wasn't like every, every downbeat, every two and four was cool music. It was like totally randomly working and it had a groove. We did that all the way to lunch and we had the whole show done by two o'clock. And when we came back, we were having such a good time. People walking by, our executive producer saying, what do you guys are doing? It's like, yeah, your, your laughter's going down the hallway because we're creating. <laughs> we said, we're creating, we're creating. So yes, that works and, and, and it's fun to do. Yeah. We go into it in the right vibration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good question. Well, thank you very much. Just to remind you, if anybody has a question, raise your hand, thumbs up, or just text in the chat and I will unmute you and you'll have a possibility to talk. Just look at the chat, people have been making comments. Yeah, like, uh, There's something so beautiful about the element of chance in the story as well. Sometimes the accidents are even better than overthinking. Yeah, great, great. Yeah, read some more. There are some great comments here and thank, thank you for the comments. It's a uh, it's it's wonderful. Like I said, this whole Zoom thing, this whole year has been really difficult for me because I'm very interactive. You know, I get into people's faces. I go, I want to see what you're doing. You know, that's my vibration. It's of energy. You know, because I like to get things done. But it's not like that all the time. You know, I have my dark moments as well. So um, let's see what's more on there. It, something beautiful, absolutely. Um, Josh says, I try to always surround myself with things that is yeah, absolutely. See, I, that's that's the thing. Put yourself markers and things that inspire you and when you try to create just change your perspective just change it up when it's not you're, hitting, you know, you're hitting it hitting the wall it's like okay i'm working really hard it's not working it's not working okay change the perspective just go take a break or do something else and maybe that's not the energy that day is going to happen you know it's it, you know not mean to be simple but sometimes there's so many again it gets to the vibration you know one of the things that I do in this vibrational thing is also look at where the planets are, you know, not to get into a whole deep in it, but, you know, if the moon changes the tides of the ocean, the biggest thing on the planet, who are we to say that the planets don't affect our little cranny sands of people that we are, right? Does not the moon change the tides? So those energies create vibrations all across. And so there's, there's a thing to that as well. And I'm, I'm getting way deep into my things for you, but I look, and I've been looking at that for like 30 years. So people go, oh, Al, you're so lucky. It's like, well, no, I timed that. You know, I didn't sign that contract because Mercury was in retrograde. So there's no way I was going to sign that contract. So I'm just saying, look at all the tools that you have. And again, it gets into a vibration. You want to give yourself the best things possible to be super successful, you know. Walden uh, says that your talk is reminding them of one of their favorite Charlie Parker quotes. If you don't live it, it won't come out of your horn. That's a, that's a great quote. Who, who sent that out there? That's that a great world. That, that's, and, and inspiring things like that and being in this community, that's another thing. Surround yourself with people of your same vibrations. You know, I, I, I teach a lot. I had a student say, well, I want to be, you know, I want to go to Hollywood and, 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 and be a director and stuff. And I go, where should I go? I go, well, if you want to be a hockey player, where are you going to go? Where the hockey players are. You know, so put yourself in a group of, of people that are vibrating in the same uh, artistic energy. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfect with you. It could be edgy because that also creates a thing. And in that, you're edgy, 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 edgy. And when you get two crazy things locked together, then that becomes a huge vibration because you just took a lot of things that weren't going to go, but you guys made it work and you made it fantastic. That's why there's great songwriter teams that are like extreme opposites in their vibrations. But together, they're... they're Unifying groove of vibrating is immense. And that's why they have hits after hits after hits. And you can do that across, you know, you know, I know attorneys that are creative, I know lawyers that are creative, I know doctors that are creative. It, they're in that groove, they're in that groove. And, and once you feel that, you can spot other people. Like I've gone into things, into restaurants with places, and I go like, ah, no, this is not gonna be good. And I just change it. You know, or I've gone to a car mechanic. Oh, well, that this guy is not in the group. I'm never going to get it much. I just leave. 
Now, that's just me because I've been doing this for a long time and I just pay attention. So it's, I'd say it's being the awareness of it, which is hard to do in every day, you know, with all these devices and things, which I turn all these things off because these things are also generating frequencies, right? These things are also generating that. So I, I have no, I, for example, I have no notifications on my phone. Nothing beeps at me, nothing vibrates, nothing does nothing. I look at it when I want to. And so there, I'm in control of it. It's not controlling me, it's not vibrating. Because when it does something, it takes me out of my groove, right? If I'm something, I hear, bzz, oh, brain's gonna wanna know what the hell was that? That could be an important text that I missed, right? And I don't know if you guys know this or not, but they've done a study that the addiction to these things is the same thing as the addiction to gambling. You know, the noise and things that it does, that there's a correlation of the brain that's saying you might miss something. You know, oh, I better do this because I'm going to miss something really important. What the hell? These didn't exist 20 years ago. Somebody didn't call you on the phone, you know about it. So nobody got you out of the group, right? So that's one thing that I do. That's the market that I have. You know, I've had producers yell at me, I couldn't get a hold of you. Yeah, I was working. Oh, you turn your phone off? You're crazy. What? I go, no, I'm working. I turned it off. 